Our oh, lass says to me, will you nip into the barbers and get a beard trim and a haircut? And I went, yeah, of course I will, cocker, no problem at all, love. Taking George to his football match this morning. On he passed the chuffing red back and town the way past, so it was either a toss-up between a gorgeous red back motel full breakfast or a beard trim and a haircut. Now then, how are you doing? You all right? Uh, hang on a minute. Do you know what I've got here? I shouldn't be showing you this. I've actually got a little arrow here, and what I need to do is I just need to put it up here on my phone to remind myself where my goddamn camera is because I always forget and if I don't look over there I'm always looking over there and you're all looking at me it's not every day that you get a trumpeter 1 in 32 A10 thrown under your nose and that's what this video is about it did come part built because the lad that had bought it and built it does uh, gone through a bit of a crisis which is fair play and uh, lost his mojo completely and said to me last year this time last year actually mark i've got an a10 that i'm just not you know i'm not going to finish it off mate how do you fancy it and like i say it's not every day that somebody goes here have a bash and you're like what me yeah go on yeah chuck it out so he brought it to bolton show and i brought it home didn't look at it for a day or two uh, and then I opened the box, and once I'd opened the box, uh, realised very, very quickly, like this, oh, that it actually part built it. Uh, but when I'm sort of turning it upside down and looking at all the sanding that needs doing and the glow, what can we call them, spunks, the glow spunks that are all over it, and one thing over, no disrespect to Daz, it got a lot on his plate. Uh, I think if I'd have been going through what Daz had gone through, I'd have probably glued my head together. Uh so it was just a matter they called it a rescue kit and he says will you have a bash and i went yeah I keep looking over here uh will you have a bash so i says yeah however in the meantime i kept getting it down and having a look and going oh jesus christ that's an absolute nightmare pouring it back in box phoning my mate up paul at liverpool at the world paul and showing him round kit, you know, look at this and look at this. And he's like, oh, chuffing hell. And we're both under the same impression that, Jesus Christ, what are you going to do with that? But I kind of owed it to Daz Dinta that, you know, somebody throws a trumpeter kit under your nose, you're not going to go, no, thanks, mate. Uh, certainly not a kit of this standing, a kit of this value, etc., etc. So I sort of owed it to Daz, if you will, to get cracked on. So it came part built, like I've said. Uh, I did have the engines to do, the ordnance to do, canopy, undercarriage, and I think that's just about it. So the fuselage were done, the two wings were done, uh, but and that's where I took over. It come over in bare plastic, full of glow spunks and uh, <clears throat> and filler and and stuff. Normally, I'm a backwards builder. I'll build the ordnance first, as per all my other videos. However, in this instance, I thought, do you know what? There's no point building all that ordnance to a standard and then uh, I'll not be able to tackle the bird. So let's get that done first. So I spent the first two weeks sanding, filling and rescribing just to make sure that it was something like. Uh, built the engines, got the engine cowlings. You can have this bird with engine cowlings both open. I will pick it up in a minute and show you in a minute, in 10 minutes or so. Look over there. Uh, and she's going to absolutely kill me. She says I look like a homeless person. Anyway, I digress. Uh, canopy did have a seam in it. I had to sand that out. But again, there's millions of videos on YouTube showing you how to do that. It's not difficult. There's no trade secrets. Uh, scrape it, pop it, box polish it and buff it simple as that uh engines you can have both engines out like i said and when engines came to me they were literally just two blobs of aluminium paint and sort of plastic you know, so i had to detail them uh and then finish the rest of the build off once i'd built the rest of it and got it all glued together including the sort of half a pound of lead weight that i've shoehorned into it front of the bleeding thing because it takes that much, otherwise it's going to be a tail sitter. Luckily, he'd not, uh, he'd not sort of finished this front end off, so I was able to put a shitload of blow tack in it. I'm like, blow tack, tyre weight, blow tack, tyre weight. But I'd put another two tyre weights in, bit more blow tack. I think there's about 12 or 15 tyre weights in front of this, and luckily, I'm looking here because it's here. Luckily, that's where it's, uh, it's sat nose down. Uh, absolutely spot on, and that metal undercarriage, it really does help. So, like I said, wings done and all that sort of thing. Where did I take over? I took over literally on uh, step 23, which is landing gear. 
but again I, I needed to finish the actual build off if you will uh, and get that something like get it uniformed with a primer before I started knocking on uh, any extras door so uh, primed it in black like I do to uniform all that a couple of little bits that still needed sanding that I've missed and because a 1 in 32 bird is a big bird uh, so a bit more sanding, a bit more rescribing, a bit more fettling, a bit more primering. And, uh, and once I were happy with everything, uh, then I did all the inner panels in an MRP 100, which is a dark gold grey. Just get a quick show of that one, look, MRP 100. Uh, and that is uh, US and NATO grey. Painted all individual panels with that, then at a distance... Uh, lowered the air pressure down ever so slightly and just get it, uh, I think it took eight, eight distance passes eight, yeah, it takes eight took eight uh, to, to, to sort of unify that colour if you will once I got it all painted I know I could put it to one side then and crack on with ordnance which was all the fun of the fair in itself and I'll tell you for why because the A10 is renowned for having uh, well, half, half the US arsenal slung under its wings, isn't it? <coughs> There's 11 pylon stations. And I have filled nine of them in. The only reason that I haven't done uh, pylon uh, number five and seven, <coughs> which is directly under the belly, is because there were no ordnance that would fit either side of the fuel tank. Either, either. I'll tell you what this kit's got on it then. It's got two. Well, it's got a pair of AIM-9 missiles on station one, I think it is. Uh, station one. Uh, and then it's got a single... Uh, what's it got? It's got a single Mark 20 on it. Then it's got three on a tri-rack AGM-65s. Then it's got... A GBU-8. Then it's got fuel tank in middle. Then on the other side it's got six Mark 82 bombs. Then it's got the AG, uh, AGM-65s again. Then it's got a Mark 82 again. And then it's got the ALQ-119 pod. I meant no wonder it went to chuffing slow. Had about six, seven ton underneath the bleeding thing. Anyway, I digress. So... Uh, Got rid of that seam on canopy uh, and masked that off ready for painting. Uh, the only two things that were missing in the kit, which you can understand, obviously, it's a donation rescue kit. The seat, which uh, we ordered, Trev ordered for me. Thank you for that, mate. Trev ordered me a, a, an aftermarket seat. Uh, and the, the three tiny little screws that screw the actual uh, hub, tyre hub, into the undercarriage strut they were missing as well so unfortunately they're just pushed on at the minute so i'm racking my brain out thinking i wonder if i can find some uh am i going to start stripping plugs and stuff trying to find three little tiny little screws like you do uh as far as fit issues were concerned with what i had left to do uh just one really uh anybody that's built an a10 will know that it's a, a two fuse large size that go together and then down at that back end, it's usually a piece on its own that's got the engine cowlings on it that sits into a recess. That took four or five uh, good sanding passes, two or three minutes of time, sitting it on, no, sitting it, no, no, yeah, that'll do, that'll do, crew. Uh, until I got that to sit down right, and even then it still needed a little bit of filler. But no drama, no drama. Nice with the metal undercarriage that incorporated the plastic parts from the kit. That were great. Again, primed in black and painted in white. Uh, and then stained with some oils and some AK streaking grime. Uh, engines, when they came, like I said, they were just two pieces of... Two, two, well, actually, I think it were a, a, a single engine piece. Uh, and when they came, they were just like aluminium. Uh, and, and you can show these engines off. So I couldn't leave that like that. I had to do that. I had to detail those engines. Uh, and, and then a tricky part, uh, attaching them uh, engine covers. Uh, that that proved uh, tricky. Needed three hands for that. And uh, 
balancing balancing bird on its nose and trying to hold a cocktail stick, the slit cocktail stick with a bit of super glow in it and, and not get super glow spunky bubbles all over and one thing that that was that was tricky. That was tricky. But but it all came together in the end. I painted it like I say in MRP black and then inner panels with uh, with the MRP 100 distance coated it then with uh, MRP 100 again uh, to unify the colour. After that, uh, the the best thing about MRP paint as well as it goes down absolutely flawlessly is you don't need a gloss coat to put your decals on because it's it, it's literally you know when you talk about. Tammy is self-leveling and Mr. Obby self-leveling. Well, MRP is self-leveling to the absolute extreme. Uh, and it, it, it dries gloss as well, so you don't even need a gloss coat to put your decals on. Decals, though, are a completely different story. Let me tell you about that. Decals, guys' sake. <clears throat> when I'm high backwards builds, you know, it's, it's normally ordinance first, and then I crack on with build. Uh, when I decal, it's smallest first, and I work my way up to the biggest. Because the decal, the the decals, the decals, uh, the big decals, the big deck, the decals. What the chuffing hell? The decals, the big decals. They're quite easy to put on. It's having the time and the patience to put those little ones on. And I, and I always found with myself that once I put the big ones on, and it came to time to put the little ones on, I'd be looking at that decal sheet, sat in here at eleven o'clock at night. Boiling my kettle, looking at decals, looking at bird and going, do you know what? Ballot's still at. Uh, and that's the difference, isn't it, between, you know, patience uh, and somebody turning out a proper build and somebody that's half assed However, because I'd not built a trumpeter kit before, I thought, do you know what? I, I best just have a look at these decals, make sure they're all right. So I tried with first one, bit of warm water. Move it with your thumb on the backing paper just to make sure that that adhesion's sort of like given way, if you will. Moved it with my thumb, snapped. Right then. That's that balance then. Right, well, I'll put it on anyway and I'll sort of manoeuvre it round. I'll get some set on it and I'll get my paintbrush on it and I'll I'll, I'll just move it to edge it, backing paper, curl it, send round. Right, you definitely don't want to go on then. You know, if that decal had have had a voice, it, it wouldn't have even said anything. That decal, that, that first decal, they'd just been going there. I'm not going on. I know, but you are going on. No, I'm not. Alex, not going on. So it ended one. Uh, don't, didn't go on because it not only did it curl underneath itself and snap, uh, once I'd finally managed to tease it off the backing paper, look at this cocking my head. Uh, once I'd finally managed to tease it off backing paper, it curled upon itself so it just looked like a ball of snot. Uh, and for, for one best really world you look and you think I can unravel that <coughs> have you ever tried to undo a 12 year old lad's football laces I say how many knots have you got in that George you're still practicing tying your laces mate and it literally looks like he's just got two lengths of shoelace like that and gone get that out <coughs> and, and so that lost has lost it <clears throat> However, you learn, don't you? You learn during the build, so it's like, right, okay, this time, next time I come to put the decal on, I will leave it ever so slightly longer. I will just tease it off with a paintbrush. That worked. Uh, and I did manage to get out, out of, there must be over 100 decals on this kit. I think I managed to get about 10, save 10, 10 of the original decals, uh, including the red spots which uh, I, I did need them. Uh, blah, 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 let me have a think. So there's a there, there's no aftermarket decals on it. I have got a tub full of decals that is there. Uh, that's where all my excess decals go. We've all got it from previous kits and I just chuck all mine in there. And I'm sure having built a one in 32 F16, uh, I know that I would have some American type decals uh, and, and I did have okay uh, loads of tyre weights in the front the uh, the undercarriage went on absolutely great uh, 
the ordinance once I'd once I'd finished the bird off, then I could start on the ordinance. That were great. Uh, but again, it's like right, okay. Happens, happens. I was just like being teased. Happens, them decals on the main bird were just like teasing me to think that I'm in control, that they're in control, really. But I'm in control. I'm a bloke. They're just like decals. I can do this. I can win this. You're not gonna beat me. Absolutely no chance. Let's get that ordinance. Let's get that. Sorted right. First ordinance tackle. Here we go. I'll show you, mate. I'll fucking show you. Here we go. Maybe you're showing me then. Right. I'll just pull that back back onto backing paper so that it's flat. I'll just do a snap. <clears throat> right. I'm in control then. Do you know what I mean? It's mind games, isn't it? It's, it's mind games. I'm sat in here at eleven o'clock at night. There's, there's no traffic. I live at the bottom of a cul-de-sac. It's like, what you mean the bastard for? Uh, because I want to be. Do you know what I mean? I want to be. So what are you going to do about it? Uh, and sat here and I think, you know, eating a full Teddy's chocolate orange to me send drinking coffee, feeling sorry for myself while well, these decals are going. Like that. Uh, so, yeah, decals sort of like 1-0. Everything else turned out all right. I have got some decals on it. Uh, I did do some post paint, pre post paint highlighting with a little bit of a product SMS, uh, just to sort of because I'd weathered it really, really heavy, and just to sort of like tone that down a little bit because I might as well have just painted it with a two inch brush full of black paint. It was that heavily weathered. Okay. Can't say whether I'll build it again. Well, I can. I wouldn't. The, the reason that I wouldn't is because I've built it. Well, Daz has built it and he's given it me and I've finished it off. I, I don't want another one in 32 A10. I suppose that's not the question, is it? <coughs> the question is, is would I recommend it? There's a pause here, you know. There's a pause. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Unless you can drop on it. I mean, it's a big, it's a big bird. It's absolutely massive. And it, them, them decals. If <coughs> if it weren't for them decals, I'd I'd say yeah. <coughs> but unless you're gonna go after market on decals, forget it. And I'm not f being funny. If you've got it in your stash, and you've seen this thumbnail come up saying. Trumpy to one in 32 post build review and you're like I'll have a bit of that because that's next in my build sequence I'd just get straight onto all your buying selling places and go one in 32 a 10 decal they are absolutely shit and I have had bad, bad decals in past but they just literally took the biscuit I didn't take the biscuit they took the piss absolutely took the piss okay if it's on the kit, if it's in the box, it's going on. That's what I'm saying. If it's in the box, it's going on. So I've got engine cowlings on, flaps in all open positions, slats all done, absolutely armed to teeth with enough weaponry to literally finish a small country. Uh, and it's uh, it's a really really heavy bird. It's isn't it funny when you when you're building a kit. Uh, you handle it with the, you th you literally throw it around, don't you, when you're building one? But then as soon as you've built it and you're like, oh, better be careful. I mean, it did turn out, oh, ladder's quite nice as well. It did turn out really, really nice. It's massive. Look at the size of that thing. It's absolutely huge. And you can see there, look, engine detail. Let me, well, let me show you that. And it has got the plastic strap. It has got the plastic shroud around it. One, two. Can you see what I mean by I didn't screw the hubs to the legs? And that's because the little screws were missing. I do need to saw some. They are just pushed on. So they have got a tendency to fall off. Look at all that. It's absolutely smoking. Uh, can you see the two pylons? Look at the side of the uh, side of the fuel tank there. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't have any ordinance to uh, to fit on there. 
Shall I put it down before I just like break it? Can I piss come off? But it weren't glued on. Uh, would I build it again? No, I wouldn't. Would I recommend it? It's all right. It's a lot, a lot of money. Uh, don't worry about that. It's a, it's, it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Uh, but uh, but it's a decent it's a decent size kit, and for everything that you can have open on it, uh, it, it does actually turn out really really nice. Okay. What would I score it out of 10? Let's just have a look at time. 20 minutes. What would I score it out of 10? Uh, hmm, a 7 and a half, maybe an 8. Because there, there are a couple of issues that, that are tricky. And then that dental pack. That dental pack just knocks two points off it straight away without even thinking about it. Absolutely no point whatsoever having a great massive aircraft like this and then shocking decals that are literally making you rip your hair out. Instructions are relatively easy to follow. Relatively easy. A uh, few bits to go in, but no, no drama. Uh, and a couple of nice little attachments. And it is nice that the plastic parts fit onto the metal undercarriage as well bit of super glue there uh that's uh that's a nice addition and then the other thing as well that you do get with the kit and it actually shows you in there look it shows the the full cannon inside the aircraft and you do get to build that oh don't rush that mate put put that back up mate yeah loads of parts Loads of bits and bats on there. Or you can go for option B, which is what Daz did, which is literally just sticking the cannon on the front, which actually I'm glad that he did, uh, because that meant that I could put all that tyre weight in the front to, to weigh it down. And then I took some uh, glory shots last night. Which I will now put up here, and if I haven't done already. <coughs> okay, and that's now going in my built stash. <coughs> that's that. Kits for kids update. We had the auction on Friday night. It's Sunday today. We had the auction on Friday night uh, and raised two and a half grand. Thanks to absolutely everybody that uh, donated and pledged and bid and took part in that and watched as well. Uh, it was a cracking, cracking night. Long, it was long, but cracking, absolutely cracking. Uh, and hopefully, kids for kids now has got enough money that I can start to make some phone calls this coming week uh, and secure the kits that I can distribute around the country, uh, so that the uh, nominated people can take them to the children's hospitals uh, around Christmas and give them away as free gifts. So. Thanks to everybody that did that. If you don't know what that's about, have a look. In fact, uh, I definitely know that I've got at least one or two videos down there. And I know Luke at Black Rifle's got uh, at least half a dozen videos on it. Okay. Right. I think that's just about it. Uh, I can't remember. I can't even remember where I got Oh, no. Weathering. Sorry. Weathering. Uh, a floury wash, a floury wash, uh, some oil wash, and then uh, basically stabbed it to death with some umbral powder. Glasses, umbral powder, uh, dark earth, that's that sort of thing. Uh, stabbed it, just kept stabbing it on, stabbing it on, blowing it off, stabbing it on, blowing it off, uh, until different colours, different shades. Uh, and then finally giving it a quick brush over with that until suitably happy. Uh, I did actually overdo it, so I did shoot some SMS medium C grey uh, into some of the patches uh, that uh, that were a little bit too heavily weathered, uh, just to sort of tone that down a little bit. Now I've done with that. Now I've done with that. Uh, what's on the bench next? It's a Revel F4F Phantom 2 WTD61 test flight that won't be a test flight. Uh, I will be having a look for some aftermarket decals for that. 
because the F4F is uh, is a really nice build to to do. <coughs> and then in uh, in about six weeks' time, we've got Telford. Uh, really looking forward to that. Looking at getting a bit of armour. He says, uh, if you do see us down at Telford, if you see me down at Telford, and you're looking, and it's because uh, I had it last year, I'm sure that's marked. Uh, give me a shout. I'll give you a fist bump. And I'll give you a shout on next video if I can. Okay, looking round. I think that's just about it, really. Yeah, that's just about it. Uh, whatever you're building, uh, whatever you're up to, uh, and wherever you are in the world, uh, stay safe, take care, and uh, see you next time. Cheers.